today so today we will start our session uh, before uh, we start our session uh, we will have a quick uh, technical briefing maya um yes. please take the floor uh, heavier can you please uh, display the presentation please uh, okay thank you zoom is unable to detect the dark camera one second Maya, please. Yeah. yeah, okay, once again, welcome and good morning to good morning or good afternoon or good evening to everyone who has come to be a part of this uh, INE Fund Call 2023 uh, info session. So before we really begin with, I would like to uh, brief few technical uh, briefing, give few technical briefing. First of all, like some of you have already done, uh, please rename yourself uh, with your name, the name of the organization and the country. And uh, secondly, uh, if possible, uh, please keep your video on so that it will uh, look more interactive. And then um, please keep your mic on mute if you are not talking. And then uh, thirdly, we will have, uh, we have a Hindi interpretation today. So for those whoever wants to listen to the Hindi interpreter, please uh, click the globe icon at the bottom of the screen and then choose the channel that you want to listen to. And then um, we have, uh, we will be recording and taking few pictures uh, for the sake of uh, documentation. So I hope everything is uh, everyone is okay with that. In case some of you have issues with that, please let us know. And then um, we will be, uh, so uh, after, whenever you want to uh, ask a question or have some query, please uh, raise your hand or uh, you can put the questions or queries in the chat box as well. And then uh, during the process of the a session, sometimes you might log out for some reason, whatever, please join back again using the same link. Um, so uh, we will be having a simultaneous interpretation. So I would request uh, everyone to speak a little slowly whenever you are giving the presentation or when you are having asking questions as well. Uh, so uh, th that's it as far as the technical briefing is concerned. Uh, so once again, I would like to welcome every one of you for this session. As you all know, uh, this session is to give uh, technical information about the grant making process and its compliances for the recently launched INE Fund Call 2023. So mm -hmm. um, I will be walking us through the information, the compliances that we need, and then the process and uh, whatever questions you have uh, during the process, about the process, you can uh, put in the chat or as well as um, raise a hand so that when Sushila is done with her presentation, we can have an interaction of all these questions and queries that we might have. Yeah, thank you everyone. And once again, welcome over to you, Sushila. Thank you, Maya. Um, so. Thank you, Maya, for a warm welcome to all the participants. Uh, we are very happy to have you here. So with this, as Maya mentioned, I will walk through uh, all of you quickly over the call. And then we will have an interaction on, um, on if you have any queries uh, or any concerns or any clarification needed. So we will have a time slot for the discussion. Having said that, um, Please, uh, uh, please uh, mention your comments or any queries in the chat box so that we will have Alma to pick up those comments and then we will discuss accordingly. Or we can also have verbal um, discussion. You can note down your comments. With this, um, I want to walk through TB introduction. So. Uh, FEMI is the International Indigenous Women's Forum. Uh, it has uh, abbreviation FEMI from the uh, 
from a Spanish uh, name. So, um, Femi overall envisions a world free of, free of all form of discrimination where indigenous women are empowered and realize their individual and collective human rights and well-being. So FEMI is guided by its uh, strategy plan and then theory of change. Next slide, please. So FEMI is established under the framework of fourth United Nations World Conference on Women, which was happened in Beijing 1995. So it is a global mechanism that brings together the collective leadership of indigenous women, human rights, leaders, activists from all around the world, which includes a socio uh, cultural region like Asia, Africa, America, Pacific, and Arctic in order to develop a common political agenda, build the capacities, and develop the leadership of indigenous women. It has twin goal, a twin objective, which is builds the, FEMI builds and strengthens the unity and develop the leadership capacities of indigenous women. And secondly, is it promotes the individual and collective rights of indigenous women in five, uh, in all the, uh, Social culture region in the globe. FEMI has different cross cutting areas and uh, key four strategic programs. So, political participation advocacy is the uh, first among all. So, this is um, the this program works closely with the indigenous women's uh, leaders, our partners, where we advocate and we voice out our voices, needs, and interests in different global and regional platforms. Secondly, we have Global Leadership School, which develops the leadership. It is a very intensive course, which develops the uh, capacity and leadership of uh, indigenous women and uh, like aspiring leaders. So we do have third, program, which is research program. And this research program is, uh, is a program where we investigate, we explore, we strengthen our knowledge on different issues that impacts the life of indigenous women. Fourthly, the key one, um, key, uh, another key strategic program is indigenous uh, women's fund, INE. This INI, um, for, uh, INI is a future word. It comes from the future, um, future word, uh, which means synthesizes collaboration within the community, reciprocity, equality, and justice from the indigenous worldview that goes beyond the limit in the time and human, which includes solidarity work, the spirituality, nature, and element of the cosmos. So um, INE is a philanthropic arm of FEMI, which, um, which is only the indigenous women's fund, which is managed by and only for indigenous women. Next slide, please. So, um, FEMI's Indigenous Women's Fund, INE, is composed of three different grand mechanisms. So, the first one, the four pioneer one we had was, and right now we have, is Seed Scaling Up Project. Second one is Leading from the South. And third one is um, Indigenous Peoples Assistance Facility, IPAP. Having said that, among these three mechanisms, seeds and leading from the South uh, is a mechanism which is applicable to Asia, 
uh, and uh, and rest of the globe. It is global, uh, but EPAC is only focused on Latin America. So hence, now we, uh, INE Fund uh, has adopted the regional approach where INE Fund team, especially Asia and the Pacific, are taking lead in this in managing all the mechanisms in Asia. These are the mechanism, but how the grant making is happening within the FEMI. So we will be sharing you the little bit of like, what is this call all about? So in, in this grant making, we have three different uh, approach. One is open call, second is direct call, and third is regranting. The direct call is based upon the experience based upon the partnership effectiveness of the uh, like you know partnership the initiatives we we invite our partners or the recommended organization with uh, other programs by other programs we invite the call for proposal directly to the uh, to the organization so that is the direct call it is by invitation to the organization and second one, uh, another one is the regranting where we invite an organization which has a regional um, regional outreach, and that organization is a bridge to reach out to the grassroots organization. We we partner with that organization, and that organization provides resources, technical uh, uh, accompaniment to the grassroots organization. So that is the regranting. And this uh, open call is a call where it is worldwide and it is competitive. So any organization which uh, meets the criteria are open to um, submit their proposal. Next slide, please. So this call, INE Fund Call 2023 is a, uh, sorry, it is uh, an open call. So who we fund? I mentioned about the eligibility. So who are eligible? Organization, those are indigenous women's organization, network, or um, loose platform. One, that those organization can apply. Second was is indigenous people's organization led by indigenous women. What does this mean? That is 50% in the decision-making board or executive council should be composed of women, not only about decision-making, but also at the executive level, especially in the implementation level, 50% of the staff should be indigenous women. So those organizations are eligible to apply. Secondly, the organization must be registered either in a traditional um, uh, organized traditional uh, uh, under the traditional um, regulation or current uh, like government um, administration in your country and have a bank account having said that i earlier mentioned that uh, the loose for a uh, network loose group can also apply but those organizations must have fiscal sponsor. This fiscal sponsor should be registered according to the uh, traditional regulation or the current regulation, administrative regulation of your country and have a bank account. And beside that, there should be a MOU or kind of agreement exists between the fiscal sponsor and the loose network of indigenous women or indigenous women led indigenous people's organization. So then you, uh, the organization is eligible. So each organization is eligible to submit only one application. Um, so who are not eligible then? So application which is submitted by non-indigenous uh, uh, submitted by organization not led by indigenous women or not indigenous, non-indigenous organization. These organizations are not eligible. 
political parties, religious group, and individual. We do not fund individual under INI. So they are not eligible. So besides that, if the, um, if the application is not complete, that is also not eligible. Regardless, if you are indigenous women's organization or indigenous women-led organization. And also, no, uh, like we have requirements of uh, some additional documents uh, uh, with the application. If those uh, required, uh, required documents are not submitted, then it becomes non-eligible. Next uh, slide, please. Thank you. So what are the priorities, priority themes of this call? There are eight different themes which has been prioritized um, for this call. One is economic empowerment. Second is land, territory, and resources. Climate change and disaster risk reduction. Um, political participation, access to pol uh, public services, prevention and elimination of all forms of violence and uh, gender-based violence, indigenous knowledge, art, culture, and sport, organizational strengthening. Having said that, there are many sub uh, themes under each themes, which you can uh, see over uh, in the implementation guide. So there are different like sub theme covered. Having said that, if it is not covered and it is, the issue is very relevant in your local context, we are open and flexible for the emerging issue. For example, right now, COVID recovery is not here. So if it is very relevant still in your region, so that is also applicable. Next slide, please. So what is the, how we can submit the um, application? We do have an uh, implementation guide. Of course, I hope you have already gone through it. So that is must. Going through implementation guide and frequently asked question is must. These are the two uh, documents which will provide you the overall guidance of how to apply. And we have online um, application that needs registration. So, um, so um, maybe we will uh, take you through how to uh, do the registration and so on in a while. So you must be sub submitting a complete online application and a reference letter. This reference letter must come from indigenous people organization, which is established and renowned. Thank you. Next, uh, next slide, please. So, <clears throat> uh, for submission of um, uh, the uh, application, please fill up the online application. Here is the link to online platform, and then upload your reference later. And still, if you have any questions, please let us know with this email, which is here. But please, before that, please go through the implementation guide and frequently ask question, which is there in the application platform. Next slide, please. So uh, let me quickly go through the timeline. Now, the application has opened at the end of January, 2023. And Please note the submission deadline, which is 28, uh, 28 December, uh, sorry, 28 February 2023, midnight Lima, Lima Peru time. Uh, any application um, after that will be rejected. Um, and the final selection uh, is expected uh, on 1st May 2023. And in this, uh, in between the submission and final selection, we have an advisory T, uh, committee, which who are responsible for reviewing the pro uh, the proposal, and uh, you know, and and recommending us for the selection. 
so um, when you submit the uh, submit the application you can log in and out multiple times and save your ap application so once the selection are completed uh, complete uh, completed oh, sorry when the sections are completed the reference letter should be attached and once the submission is done there will be no space for revision so please uh, fill your section um, as you want but uh, and as it is not uh, it, it will not be able to revise after submission um having said that we want to mention here exception online we are talking about we accept only online application having said that if you are the organization located in a very remote area with very very limited internet uh, internet um, internet access please reach us out for consultation so that uh, we can do the uh, accompaniment for the submission uh, so again once again submission deadline please note the submission deadline next slide please so what are the grant size and the uh, uh, duration for the uh, application so we have three different kinds of grants small medium and large and the duration for the small grant is up to 18 months it is from you can apply from 6 month to 18 month for small and the maximum amount is 25000 and small grant is applicable to community level or grassroots level organization. Medium grant is up to uh, 24, um, 24 months and the maximum amounts go up to $85,000. And it is applicable to regional and uh, sorry, national and sub regional organizations. And the large grant is up to 24 months and it goes up to 200,000 US dollar and it is applicable to the regional and sub-regional organization and also sometimes if it is a consortium of um, uh, indigenous women's organization or indigenous women led indigenous people's organization that is also uh, possible having said that we have very limited number of large uh, size grants please note that um, um, it might be uh, limited to uh, may, very few numbers unless you have a very good argument for the large uh, size grant. Next slide, please. Um, in, in, um, in terms of geography, INE fund covers all the reasons all the all the social culture reasons it is a global uh, so um, you can apply from any any countries uh, where we have indigenous people there next slide please so at the end i just wanted to highlight the key points again if you have any queries Here's the email, please note down the email. And also you can find in our social media, our uh, um, newsletter, as well as in our, um, um, our web page, you can find the email from there. Uh, any queries, please send to this email. And this call is only and only for indigenous women's organization or indigenous people's organization which is led by indigenous women with 50 percent in decision making and ex executive level please read carefully the implementation and faq which are our reference document for this call the application is online and the document uh, required document should be uh, uploaded before submission 
And the deadline of this call is 28 February, 2023, midnight Peru time. Thank you all. Uh, so let's quickly go through the video so that um, we see how to do the registration and online application. Thank you, Javier, for, uh, yeah, these are some of the important links. Um, so maybe we can copy and paste this uh, in the, in the uh, uh, chat so that you can have a, uh, have a look later as well. So uh, I will, uh, we will be pasting this. With this, uh, let's go to the tutorial on the, uh, on the application. Thank you, Javier, for uh, playing that tutorial. Uh, okay, thank you, Javier, for showing us the video of the tutorial. Uh, before we go with the question and answers, I would like to request everyone to put your cameras on so that we can take a picture for documentation purposes. And then after we take the pictures, we will uh, hand it over to Sushila for the questions that we have. Yes, we would like to see your beautiful faces. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
so uh, let's take uh, we will need to take a few times so let's take a taking Yes, but nice I want to, to see to... so many. Uh, nice to yeah. see so many <laughs> familiar faces here. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Again, <laughs> after seeing the face, we like very, very connected. <laughs> yeah. So one more. I think we need to take three times. One more. Yeah. Uh, like I think we wait for one minute, Maya, so that we still yeah, yeah. still see right. video is coming in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can put the lights on. <laughs> okay. Yes, let's take one last time. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, so now, uh, if anyone has questions, you can raise your hand and ask questions, and Sushila will be happy to answer, I think. And other than that, I think whoever has questions in the chat box, uh, you can also put your questions there. You can see a hand already, a few hands. So I think I first saw uh, Giti Shil from development. So I will give the time to you first. Hi, hi, good morning, everyone, and good evening, and good day to everyone, actually. Uh, I just wanted to understand about the reference letter, if you can elaborate a bit on it, uh, what will be the minimum requirements, so that uh, I'm pretty sure there will be mention of it in the implementation guidelines, but if you can uh, quickly take us through, or maybe if you can share a sample, that will be helpful for all. Yeah, um, we, we will be responding jointly as the Asia team. Alma, would you like to uh, respond to that one? I hope my question was uh, clear enough. Yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think in the presentation also it was mentioned that the letter can be from the traditional, uh, like uh, traditional council or the like uh, community, traditional community governing body, uh, or any indigenous people organization, women organization, and the letter should mention that they know your organization and your work and they, they support uh, your project proposal. So they should be aware of your project proposal and they should be aware of the uh, project implementation area. So those th things, including the communication details and the authority, yeah. authority of the organization or the groups. Yeah. All yeah. Right. That answers it. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, like two things is very important. One is uh, the organization, as Alma mentioned, should be renowned one because if uh, organization is not renowned, we might not know whether the organization is uh, itself is uh, indigenous or not. And as mentioned by Alma, other one is it should clearly spell that in the organization which has asked for reference letter is indigenous women's organization or indigenous women-led organization. It has to be very explicit in that uh, letter. Second one is the, if we want to have uh, some further discussion, it must include the contact, contact detail of the uh, reference provider organization. Email, uh, WhatsApp, phone number, and so on, yeah. Here I would like to I would like to one more point here. Uh, sometimes the organization also provide can provide letter in the regional language, uh, but uh, there should be translation in English as well on the same letter. Okay, uh, thank you, Sushila and Alma. I hope uh, that answers your question, Michelle. And I think there were some few questions related to reference letter in. The chat box. Hope I their questions are addressed as well. So now, um, um, based on who raised the hand first, I'll give the time to uh, Bernard Fatima to uh, have your question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, I saw that uh, the slides explains very detailed 
about the application. We are an indigenous group of people and uh, uh, led by women leadership from these communities. We have already uh, committed ourselves and started the program funded by Women's Fund Asia for 2023 to 2025 which is the leading from south. I see that Aimi is also involved in leading from the south. Is it okay if we apply for this funding? Um, yes, uh, Bernard, thank you for this question. Very, very relevant question. Um, uh, also, like, thank you for mentioning your name, organization, and country. I uh, I request all of uh, the uh, participants who are asking the question, uh, please mention your uh, like country and your organization as well, uh, so that we know where are you from. So with this, uh, yes, uh, of course, if uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have like different mechanism which will be supporting this like call. No, that's why we have multiple other sources of resources to support. So we might not able to support directly uh, from the LFS one, but we, if you are indigenous women's organization or led organization with all the eligibility criteria meeting um, uh, in, 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 in for this application, then you can apply. Uh, it doesn't uh, like, you know, restrict you if you ha are already the member. Uh, I mean, all the already the uh, uh, partner of LFS. So please do apply if you meet the eligibility. Thank you. Okay, uh, so let me give the time to Marlia from uh, Wise Info, Web Info Act from the Philippines. Hi, good morning. I have similar question about the reference letter. I, I read the frequently asked questions document and it actually states um, either the organizations that you're referring to are recognized or as you said renowned or those who have been partners with FEMI. Um, th that would be a, a challenge for for new um, IP women's organizations especially here in the Philippines. We are not that um, traditionally organized where you have like a banner organization or a national uh, nationally recognized um, indigenous uh, people's organization or or IP women led organizations that can actually provide such reference letter. But we do have um, NGOs that may have the, that can qualify the 50% uh, requirement. Uh, but as I've said, for, for new IP led organizations like I, I'll specifically mention the one in Boracay because probably some of you are familiar with the Boracay Island. Um, they are still in the process of being part of, of other organizations in the indigenous cultural communities, um, community, I mean groups of organizations. They have, they have renowned partners but not in the, not IP led or not indigenous people's led. So uh, how can we actually address this uh, kind of, of a situation? Uh, is, there, is there a window for young or, or uh, newly, newly organized groups for, for this particular call? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Marlin. Um... Especially like um, Philippines, especially had lots of indigenous people's organization and indigenous women's organization. Yes. So, yes. Mm -hmm. so having said that, um, uh, it is not a problem for a newly formed youth uh, organization to apply for this call. Uh, only the thing is, if you uh, like have the reference letter from any of those organizations. So that that will work for you. We are open yeah. to new organization, even non-registered organization. Yeah, I, I totally agree 
with you that are a lot, there are a lot, but we are not that uh, traditionally organized. And as you have said, they must at least know the organization. By I don't think it's fair for them to just issue a reference letter. So is is there a way where we, we that the new organization can can be given such a grace period to at least um, you know have a relationship with with those organizations because the deadline is on February twenty eighth. So mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm what I'm saying is say in 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 a period of say one year they'd be allowed mm -hmm. to at least um, have or establish that kind of relationship with those organizations it's not totally no relationship but we would like to make sure that at least there is a portion of knowing what they're doing there are a lot of things happening in the philippines but not everyone is privy to what's to what is exactly the context of a particular area right mm -hmm. so like for me if i say boracay everyone would probably say we know boracay but do they actually know what's happening in boracay no and then it's unfair to just get a reference letter. although we know organizations that can uh, that can actually give something for for such kind of a letter but maybe if there is a window for like uh, such a requirement be given in the latter part of the application just to make sure that there is a good establishment of 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 relationship within the new organization and the, the organization that would provide the reference letter if that's possible thank you yeah thank you marley uh, marley especially like um like philippines has an indigenous people's network where even if it is like from very grassroots level so um uh, in this case, maybe even if the central committee doesn't know uh, the new organization, or at least like the committee over there, if they are organized, I think the reference from the like local level uh, indigenous peoples, like you know, or indigenous uh, women's network at the local level can also like be a reference at this case. So that um, and as I mentioned, if we have like two key things in there. Where, which says that this is this organization is led by indigenous women youth or um, um, or indigenous uh, women, uh, youth uh, youth um, organization then that that is enough having said that if you feel like some um, some uh, if you are new to Fimi and you have some issues um, so we can deal that issue bilaterally as well please reach us out then we can we will because still we have time. At the end of the call, we might not able to deal you in person, but right now we have time so that we can discuss this and we will try to link that with them because we have our network over there. Okay, right? yeah, so we mm -hmm. would like to but, know that uh, network of yours, probably we know them. Uh, this this mm -hmm. is not a youth, it's a young organization in a sense. It's only Ah, yes. okay. Not youth, yeah. young. Okay, I, yeah. okay. Young, <laughs> young in a sense, there is, it's a group, it's an indigenous people's organization uh -huh. that has a, uh -huh. have problems with their ancestral domain, but primarily led by women. And the program committees uh -huh. are led by women. So we... Okay, okay. Yeah, got we, that. That's why we are reaching out. Oh, thank okay. you. We'll touch we'll okay. okay. to you after this. Sure, thank sure, you. Please. Thank you. Uh, I just want to mention one thing earlier, which uh, Bernard was asking. Um, especially this when it comes with the LFS call, which is not with FEMI, but for with like for Asia, it is Women Fund Asia who is implementing uh, LFS here. So this is about other organization LFS call. But if any organization, any organization who has active, um, active uh, uh, MOU with FEMI are not eligible to apply. Having said that, if you are ending your project and you have already submitted your final report, please consult with us. We will deal that case by case. We will have a consultation on that. So uh, this is for our existing partners who still have active MOU with me. They are not eligible to apply. Having said that, if the uh, like report has been submitted, and um, then we can have a bilateral consultation. Thank you. I wanted to add because this is something very important to tell. And similarly, there is another like um, aspect to this that is about the fiscal sponsor. Some of our indigenous people's organizations led by indigenous women 
our fiscal sponsor of some other organization. Having said that, this year, we are opening this opportunity for fiscal sponsor who have MOU for the other network, but not for themselves, are eligible to apply. Having said that, they meet the eligibility criteria itself, which is mentioned in an implementation guide, which we shared earlier. So with this, Maya, let's go to the chat box one. Let's have three from, uh, for, uh, like in the live, three from chat box. If there is any. Alma? Yeah, Kazi baby. Yeah, uh, Kazi baby, uh, we got the point. But can we, because of the questions in the chat box as well, uh, we will take a few questions from the chat box and then we will come back to you. I hope okay, that's so, okay. Yeah. So we see that uh, three questions raised from uh, Maria, Maria, but I think those questions are answered. Uh, right, Maria? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we see uh, many... Uh, questions regarding to the reference letter itself. Uh, so I think Sanjita Dangshaya from Wheel Tower of Shell similar question. Can you please clarify about the reference letter? I hope, sister, you have got the answer. Sanjit Dangshaya. Uh Let's go with like, you know, which is not answered. In case of our, our organization registered, do we need a reference letter? Yes, please. Even if it is registered or non-registered, we need a reference letter. And can chairs based program focus on IP give a letter of recommendation? Um, um, yeah, as mentioned earlier, um, uh, the religious group we um, is I, not eligible to apply, nor I think um, as uh, from Philippines, we expect to have a letter from directly from the uh, IP organization, please. If you need some reference of who are IP organization there, we can provide that. Uh, but of course, you are from Philippines, you know better than us. <laughs> Yeah, um, anything remaining, Alma? Let's focus there is on one that. question from Infect. Can we include the administration cost in the project? I think yes. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, if, because we have like two stages of uh, application. First is a kind of concept note, um, which we don't uh, expect to have a like very detailed uh, like very detailed application as well as no, no, we don't need a like budget description no, as such or budget uh, detailing. We don't need, we just need a block budget now. Uh, but it is needed when we go, if you are uh, all, uh, invited for a full proposal submission in May 1, around May 1. So after that, you, the organization is selected. The selected organization must submit the additional uh, documents as mentioned in the application and and the um, budget. Having said that, uh, we do allocate the administration uh, budget in the in the project itself. Yes. Is it all, Alma? Uh, there is one more question. Uh, will this video be uploaded in the Facebook? Uh, no, this, yeah, sorry, this um, video will not be uploaded in a, uh, uploaded in a uh, Facebook. Having said that, please reach us out in an email um, provided in the, in the, uh, like, chat box. Uh, Maya, thank you for uh, copying it again. I, I did some mistake over there. I, I was writing something else and it came together. No? Please amend that. And <laughs> thank you, Maya, again, uh, posting the email that. Please do not send any personal email. We will not be responding the email which, receive, which is received in our personal email. But please send your email only in the email, prescribed email herewith, no? which deals with, the, uh, de deals with the call itself. So that is all. So let's go to our, uh, like, you know, our participants who have raised their hand, Maya. Yeah, so uh, I'll now give the time to Kazi Baby. 
but I would like to yes. request you to uh, tell the name of your organization and the country because uh, it is important for us to yes. know that. Yes, okay. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I'm Kazi Baby. I'm from uh, PDAP Participatory Development Action Program. It is based in Bangladesh, in Dhaka. So uh, my question is actually we are NGO and women-based organization. And we are working with the indigenous people, those who are living in Chattogram, so tribal area. So we are working with them. So my question is, uh, are we eligible if we apply for them? And my second question is reference letter. Uh, we know the many renowned uh, network, those who can uh, uh, provide reference letter for us that we are working in indigenous with indigenous people so uh, is it is it uh, okay if we submit the uh, reference letter like that way so i wanted to know can you hear me yeah um with the interest of time, thank you for your question, Kasi uh, uh, Baby. So um, we will, uh, I think we will take three questions and respond together. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for your question. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Then um, we will get two more questions from uh, Christina and then from Shobha. Please, Christina. Uh, Johar. I'm Christy. I'm, uh, I'm a member of Prayatna. It's a Adivasi collective of uh, it's a collective of Adivasi youth. So um, this year we are getting registered as uh, and we like Joham uh, the people like, people who have been um, shouldering the entire work of this of the collective. We are forming our own uh, NGO, and uh, the collective has been. Uh, operational since 2010 and we've been working primarily on education um, my question is can a unregistered collective apply because as of now we are not registered body I'm sorry I didn't like I guess I guess I missed the initial part of the conversation today so I guess it was covered there but uh, I missed it somehow so <laughs> that's how this question no worries no worries Yes, Shobha. Uh, yeah, Shobha, can you uh, ask your question? Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, I think I uh, <clears throat> we also part of the indigenous group in Tamil Nadu. That is uh, PVTG Federation, um, South India, Tamil Nadu state, and Nilagiri districts. So our group is uh, Nilagiri's particularly vulnerable tribal group federation. Uh, under this, uh, we work with the eight uh, ethnic groups in our districts, and we are expanding, expanded our group in entire uh, Tamil Nadu state as of now. So this is the, our work uh, in my state. So my question is, um, uh, we have got a grant this year, uh, Emmy, that is for Gudanur Padir Pengal Nalasangam. They received uh, some $10,000. But this is a one particular community, yeah, girls got it. But we have other groups also. So that means uh, we have registered body of uh, Kartunaikan Pengal Kuru, means the Kartunaikan indigenous community have their own uh, group, which is registered, and they don't have any other source of income, so we are supporting them. So they are the forest dependency people, they are the for forest gatherers. Uh, as if now they formed a group, but they ha uh, they have funding uh, lack of funding resources. So is it like because I am the contact person for this uh, Google Lord Panier Pengal Nala Nala Is it this group is eligible to apply for this grant? This is my question. Maya, shall I respond? Yes, please, Sushila. Okay, yeah. thank you. So regarding the Bangladesh one, uh, especially working with IP, 
as we mentioned this uh, fund is only and only for indigenous women's organization or indigenous women led organization it uh, only those organization are eligible having said that uh, but there are some reasons in a country or some country where we do not have indigenous people's organization as such in this regard if that is the case please consult with us so that uh, we will be clear on that otherwise um, uh, we 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 intend uh, to stick with our criteria so the the eligibility is only for indigenous women's organization or indigenous women led organization regarding the reference letter from the community uh, in if the organization is selected for the second um, like uh, full proposal second stage full proposal stage so at that time we must have fps free prior informed consent letter from the community itself so we want our community to know like where we are going to have that initiative to uh, to provide the fps so that is the mandatory one for the second stage so this time the reference letter from the community will not be acceptable except as alma mentioned earlier if we have executive council the traditional um, like governing body there if they provide that one is okay but that should be somehow uh, well known to the indigenous peoples organization there because we need to have a cross verification so with this um, Christy's question here, yes, Christy, if you have fiscal sponsor, even if you are not registered, you are eligible to apply, but you need to have a fiscal sponsor, which has been registered and have the bank account. So that is uh, possible. Just mm -hmm. a follow up question to that. Uh, will, the will the fiscal sponsor be FCRA organization or a non-FCRA organization will do? Um, especially in India, we are like, you know, FCRA is a mandatory uh, rule for government. And we have like, I think uh, we cannot go without an organization who doesn't have uh, FCRA. We have to have an FCRA organization. Otherwise, they cannot receive the uh, fund, no? We face that challenge in India. So uh, you need to find an organization to fiscally host the your group, non-registered group. So it has to be have a FCRA. Otherwise, um, like you know, the fund cannot be received. So please uh, note that, and please make sure that you meet the eligibility criteria as mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, but having said that, yeah, okay. Let's go to uh, another question. Okay, regarding uh, Sobaji's. Um, Sobaji, of course, if there is another group in the same area. Um, provided like we have a very limited resource, resources always limited, uh, but if the organization is uh, meets the criteria, can qualify and is approved or is like selected by our advisory committee, recommended by our advisory committee, of course, the organization, other organization in your area can definitely apply. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, but make sure that the like you know our right holder doesn't overlap with each other. If it sure, overlaps, sure. then they are yeah. they are totally different group. Okay, different group. perfect. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So shall we go to the uh, chat one for the next okay. round? So we have a similar question, uh, question from uh, Marlia and uh, Gatish and Development Consortium. They are asking whether. Uh, we can provide them the list of organization from the respective countries like Philippines and India for recognized by female or who are associated with female. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, that is only one. Uh, yeah, that that I combine two questions and I will have from Pranika. Can informal network of IT professionals also apply for this fund if they have a host organization? Mm -hmm. uh, third, we have from Tichatma uh, Progressive. Uh, as currently the organization covers its work in three Chittagong Hill District areas, so we are eligible to submit for medium grant where the area is mentioned as national or sub regional. Mm -hmm. 
the mm -hmm. progressive mm -hmm. already is the part here. So this quite three question you can answer. Right? Okay. Thank you, Alma. So um, regarding the um, uh, the like organization in Philippines, please reach us out in the email. Then we we will uh, try to connect with them. But we respect the like you know ethic of the organization. If the organization is willing to uh, like link with you, uh, we will definitely link with you because we need to have a, like their their uh, approval as well. But having said that, we will like we will uh, link you up. We will we can provide you the some information on those. Please write to us in in our email that we have provided here. That is one. Uh, second, regarding the professional network, if um, if the network meets the criteria, eligibility criteria, and it, it has a common cause, and of course it can apply. But like, you know, as we mentioned earlier, the resources limited and our advisory committee are key for recommendation. So if it uh, like, you know, it appeals our advisory committee, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely the, the network can apply. Third one is, what was that? Um, uh, progress. Progressive. The, this like medium grant. Especially um, progressive. Um, progressive is our current partner, um, and um, as I mentioned earlier, if you are our our current partner and uh, you have um, already submitted your final report, then please consult with us. Um, you have uh, you can consult with us with our personal email, especially for the partners. Uh, as like we have been communicating constantly, so we can uh, talk about that if you have already submitted your final uh, final report. But um, having said that, um, if you are our current uh, partner and you have not yet uh, or in the are in the process of submission of the final report, then um, uh, organization is not eligible. Please consult with us on uh, and consult with us on this uh, uh, regard, uh, and then we can talk about it bilaterally. Okay, Maya, maybe we go for the next. Yeah, okay, so now uh, let us take uh, two questions from uh, Kao Home, a PWU from Myanmar, and from Nuva, it's, I think, uh, Nif from Nepal. And then maybe uh, the third question we'll take from TGCWU from Sri Lanka. So one after the other, you can uh, put your questions and then Sushila can answer together. Um, thank you for letting me ask you a question. And um, I have a, a two or uh, three questions. And yeah, let me introduce our organization first. Uh, we are from Myanmar and Pao Women Union, which is ethnic based organi uh, women lead organization. And then we are working for women uh, uh, ending WOW anti-violence against women and also like promoting women participation and leading role. Uh, yeah. And then we are also a, me a member of uh, APWLD. Uh, uh, yeah. And yeah, my question is like, um, I, I have heard that you have mentioned three different grants and, and like a small grant and median grant and last grant. So uh, it's also, uh, my question is, it is, uh, we can apply all of these uh, grant or it's also like depend on the side of the organization this is my first question and also like uh, the uh, next question is and we can also add like um, a main cost in our grant can we also can we add uh, and then cost in our grant this is a uh, uh, next question yeah and the uh, and the last question is um, I just make to I want I just want to make sure that like uh, like I have heard that uh, non-registration organization also can uh, apply. Is uh, yeah, I, I just want to confirm this because our organization is not a registration uh, organization. Thank you. Thanks. 
Uh, thank you. So I'll let, go ahead and ask my question. Uh, so Sewa and hello everyone. My name is Nova Rai and I'm from Nepal. Uh, I'm from National Indigenous Women Forum. We're an indigenous women organization led by indigenous women for uh, the rights of uh, indigenous women. And we've been active since 1998. And for this uh, um, call, like we have, we were thinking of applying it with uh, two of our two of our other organizations. Oh, sorry, I think you can hear my chicken. <laughs> um, uh, so like uh, one from Bangladesh and one from India. So we all have been already, we have been established and we're also uh, led by indigenous women. And then uh, we can also get reference letters and we have fiscal sponsors. But then the thing is like, we have never really worked together uh, in the past. So like, are we already disqualified to apply since uh, this is the, uh, like, we were just uh, trying to collaborate for this proposal. And the other thing is like, if we are still eligible to apply, uh, do we need reference letter like individually from each organization or do we need it for the, the for the three of us itself? Uh, I think that's it. Thank you. Sorry, Nubaji can, sorry, uh, Maya, can, let me, uh, I, I did not get her first question. So can, can I ask her, Maya? Yeah. 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 Um. So, uh, cl to clarify, like, to apply for this uh, proposal, we were thinking of applying uh, it together uh, with, one, uh, with yeah. one organization from India and one organization from Bangladesh. But then, like previously, you mentioned, like even for coalition and groups, like uh, and networks, like we need to have fiscal sponsors. But then we don't have like, you know, group uh, sponsors for us. Like it's just individual level. Right, so are we like already disqualified mm -hmm. to apply for the proposal then? Thank you. Yeah, so uh, uh, DG, the DGC, yeah, you can go ahead with your question. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Nelum from Textile Garment and Clothing Workers Union from Sri Lanka. Uh, we are working with uh, pre trade zone workers and other uh, industrial sector workers. Uh, we have some clarification. Uh, we want to clarify whether we are uh, eligible to apply this uh, funds. Yeah, so Sheila, I think you can answer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you all three of you for your question, um, especially uh, for the Grant, um, yes, uh, the grant, um, like which grant to apply depends upon the organizational um, capacity. So having said that, uh, we are, um, yeah, this is something, um, uh, something that we suggest like, please apply um, as you feel, uh, which is, uh, which correspond to your organization itself. Otherwise, if you are uh, you apply for the other grant which is off beyond your capacity, then that will lead you to be non-selection. No, so please note that. So please uh, consider your organization capacity and so on. But also, like for a very first timer, we expect if if your organization has a national coverage or so, we uh, uh, request really really to go from the small. But this is not the uh, like you know the um, must, but we just suggest that so that there will be much more possibility to be collaboration uh, to to be partner. Having said that, if you have any other like you know uh, concerns, uh, please consult with us, because sometimes uh, we are not not um, familiar with your context, and then we might like not understand you fully. So if you have any other further like. Uh, concern on this, please let us know. That is one. And of course, um, admin cost is part of like the proposal. Uh, when, if your organization is uh, selected, then uh, we will provide you the guide of like how to all allocate the pro, uh, like, you know, program cost and uh, admin cost. We do have admin cost. We have provision of admin cost. And um, of course, non-registered organization can also apply, uh, but you need to have a fiscal host uh, and with the bank account, 
and uh, you must be providing the like uh, providing the reference letter so that is the like case mm -hmm. regarding um, the group uh, like this is when you mention about three um, uh, three organization uh, like in applying together uh, this is not new group this is consortium so if it is a consortium there must be one lead organization so the proposal has to come from lead organization and you don't need a like fiscal host for consortium because i believe i hope i understood you well so if it is registered organization you don't need a, a like you know need a fiscal host only among three one can be a lead organization to apply um what else was there mm, no was question i thought i understood i forgot that one please remind me of the your second question regarding the like you know the industrial worker one as we mentioned uh, sri lanka is our first uh, like you know sri lanka uh, we have no we do not have any partner from there uh, like you know um, so in this regards uh, as i mentioned earlier the uh, the things sometimes can be contextual hence uh, if your organization is not a uh, ip organization or women led organization um and you are from sri lanka uh, as this is new country for us please research out via email so that we can discuss over there because um we 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 can uh, like uh, discuss more about it because we need to understand your context before we reply you here mm -hmm. thank you uh, so sheila the second question from nuva was whether all the three organizations the consortium organizations will need reference letter. Like, will they need three reference letter or one? Reference? Yeah, got that. Uh -huh. uh, no, if um, we need reference, as I mentioned, uh, the proposals should be submitted by a lead organization. If the lead organization is registered, we don't need a fiscal sponsor. And same goes with the reference letter. Reference letter should only be for. Uh, um, the lead organization, not all three consortium members. But if there is any in, in for, if your organization is selected and if there is any other information needed, we will definitely uh, come back to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we have one more question from Smriti, but before that, uh, if Alma, if there's any questions in the chat box, we can take that before we take the live question. Oh, Simriti has, uh, she has a uh, good question even in the chat box, so maybe she can uh, put her question there. Okay. Yeah, Smriti, I give you the time for the question. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the question I already put in the chat box, uh, somehow I missed uh, maybe because of the network. So my question is that, uh, can we submit a, a joint uh, like joint proposal, can we submit in this call? Like AIPP um, work also with uh, many networks like NIWA in Nepal. So if there is any possibility, we can submit together. Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the application can be with the consortium member. Uh, but we need a lead organization and the consortium member. So um, the application with different in collaboration with different organization is possible with one uh, leadership of one organization who meets the criteria. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one question from uh, Lou. She says that uh, they have the organization led by the indigenous female, but the management team is included man. So is the the question is, uh, can we apply, can they apply? And uh, another question again from Paji Baby saying that they work with the indigenous women, uh, indigenous uh, women, and uh, their organization is women based, but the people are poor and uh, they cannot write. So can the renowned network provide reference letter for them? Sorry, the second question was not clear. Can you clarify the second question, please? 
they are we are working with indigenous women organization which is a women based organization but they are very poor i mean the community with whom they are working is poor and they cannot write so i think she's referring to the reference letter so can they uh, can they take a reference letter from any well known or renowned network who can provide letter Okay. And then the community so, cannot provide the letter, so can they take letter from the, any other networks? Okay, great, great. Um, please remind me if I uh, don't respond to the specific question. Um, so regarding the, is this all Alma? Sorry, I just jumped in. There are many actually. Okay, let let take three, and then we can come back okay. to the others. Third later. question. The third question is they are. Adrina from Philippines. The network is IP women led organization registered, but they do not have bank accounts. So can they apply? Okay. So I think uh, um, regarding the, as we mentioned, our key criteria is like, uh, INE fund is for indigenous women, you know, so indigenous women organization and indigenous women led indigenous people organization. When we say the indigenous people organization, it is composed, the organization is composed of indigenous men and women and others. No. So in this regard, um, uh, indigenous, uh, if it has 50% of indigenous women um, or sometime like, you know, if it is like, uh, uh, from sexual minority, if it is like um, trans, uh, uh, like you know, women uh, with with the lesbian led organization, they can apply definitely. Um, also, like you know, so uh, if it is like considered as women led organization with fifty percent of um, indigenous women, they, uh, yeah, you are eligible to apply. Um, regarding the community reference letter, um, in this regard, um, uh, we need an organization who, who provides the reference letter to be renowned in a country, or at least like, you know, which is known to the community, uh, known to the, like, you know, national level or uh, sub-national level, so that, you know, it will be uh, like, you know, it is like kind of, you know, building the confidence and making sure that these resources goes to indigenous women and indigenous people uh, as such. That's why, please, uh, uh, we are not requesting for reference level from community as such. Um, it has to be organ established organization. So uh, if the organization is registered but do not have a bank account, um, bank account is uh, important because the, all the funds shall go to the bank. So bank account is very, very important. Hence, we need a fiscal, in this case, if we meet all the other eligibility criteria, we need a fiscal sponsor in this case where you, even if you are registered and do not have bank account, um, then um, we cannot transfer the fund. So if selected, we cannot transfer the fund. So we need a organization, host organization, fiscal host, who has the registration and the bank account. I hope this answers uh, your question. Thank you. Okay, I saw Noom's hand was raised earlier. Noom, you would like to go? I think yeah. she already spoke. She already spoke and- Yeah. Yes, uh, Hello. Uh, yes, Noom, please go ahead. Okay, thank you, Susila. Um, I, I heard you mention about it. Um, women in the organization is 50%, we can apply, but uh, actually in uh, indigenous people for agriculture development in Cambodia, we call IMC organization that we start to reestablish and we have board and also a management team, but in that we include men and it's not um, uh, 50 percent so could, could we still apply for that or could we join or could we join uh, this proposal with uh, other organization that um, 
lead by um, women as uh, Siva. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And also you, you mentioned uh, in the first time related to uh, this proposal, uh, we did not um, need to have more detail about the budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, especially like, you know, uh, we must comply with the 50% of indigenous women in board. But yeah, it has to be 50% of indigenous women in board. But in management committee, sometimes like um, the management committee can be composed of two or three people, no? But there might be key staff who are leading certain portfolios. So those staff are also accounted. So please yeah. think about it. If there, you, if you have other queries, please let us know. Uh, you you can reach us out to the via email that has been posted in the chat box. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Any other? Room? Okay. Do you have, further? have one more. Um, one more question. Can, can I add more? So in, in our organization, we have already registration with the MOI, the Ministry of Interior, but uh, the recognized uh, certificate of about just three people, and it's not a uh, few people, but uh, could we um, add more of our board and recognize by <laughs> our board? <laughs> yeah, make sure it, 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 it's possible or suitable for us. Yeah. Uh... No, I think the FEMI have no say on this because the organizational process, organizational need depend upon your organization, no? So yeah. FEMI uh, will, uh, I mean, this is your decision because we, we talk about self-determination, self-governance, no? So it is your decision how to go forward. Uh, please do not do anything which, uh, which, uh, you think like this, I mean, this is our recommendation, our suggestion. Uh, this is not only the opportunity, there are many more opportunities to come, but if you have any other queries, please write to us. Uh, please reach us out, we will be uh, <clears throat> happy to respond to you. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Oh, we have more, I think, last question. Uh, Linda from Philippines. The fiscal organization has an existing MOU with uh, Women Fund Asia, so can IP women organizations still sponsoring, or still they can apply? I think this question was answered before. <clears throat> and who are yeah. from ah, Nepal? just a moment. No, no, this is different question, Alma. Okay, let's go to, let's take three questions, yeah. There are just two. So another one is, uh, how she said that she, she could not see the budget do we need to submit? Of course, no. Uh, regarding the, um, uh, even if the fiscal organization has existing MOU with WFA, uh, but not with FEMI, um, and this organizational is meets the criteria of INE uh, fund call 2023, yes, definitely you can apply. There's no restriction. Uh, and, you know, being partnered with uh, WFA will not restrict, not limit. But please make sure that you meet the eligibility criteria. I request you please go through the implementation uh, guide and the FAQ before, like you know, before growth, uh, going through the application. And regarding the budget, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we do not need a detailed budget for this step because we have two steps. This first step, we need only the block uh, like budget you intend to uh, apply for. For example, it can be 25,000, it can be 10,000, it can be 60,000, or it can be 150,000 or 200,000. So we need just a block budget now. Once your proposal application is reviewed, uh, recommended by our advisory committee, then only we will request you, we will reach out to you for detailing the budget with the, all the breakdown of your activities, your administration and other things. No, what is, we do have a budget template and we will come back with you with that budget template. Right now, you just need to submit the block budget, not the detail. There is one section, please go through the application 
there is one section where uh, it says that uh, the total amount of um, grant you would like to apply. I hope this clarifies your question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, okay, we see Marlena, uh, Maya, uh, do we have more? Uh, we have a few more questions in the chat box, but maybe uh, we um, give time to Marlia for her question. Oh, yeah, please. No, it's, it's just a, it's just a quick a quick thank you about the FPIC because that is exactly the center of if ever the center of the proposal of the Ati women in Barakay. There is so much uh, complications and and violations on the conduct of FPIC processes in the Philippines. So that's why we found this out. And and yeah, that's all. Thank you for having that as a major requirement. We badly need that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. So Alma, so, I think we can. I think a few more uh, in the chat box. Uh, okay. It's uh, one and hour now, so maybe we will just take the last few two questions from the chat box. What do you think, Sushila? Yeah, Alma, you can. I think we have just one question in the chat box. So last one from Dr. Reji Kumar. Uh, they have a tribal women movement in uh, Kerala area. Uh, it is, which is not registered, but uh, they are also associated with the Oru Trust, which is registered. So can they apply? So... Um, uh, if you're, I mean, the registration is not the criteria, but at least the apply, apply, applicant organization or uh, I mean, the loose network can also apply if they meet the criteria of indigenous, uh, like you know, composition of indigenous women or the dish, or the indigenous women-led organization. It is like we can also like you know um, work with the our fund can be like uh, uh, grant making uh, can also include the loose network, but just we need a like like parent organization or which we call it. A host uh, organization can, uh, like, they can take the host organization which is registered and have uh, the bank account. Having said that, I just want to re-emphasize here: uh, the all the decision making regarding the fund and the activities should be with the either uh, this this uh, tribal women's organization, no, even if it is loose. So that is the key criteria we do have for this one. So I Thank think you. that was the last question we had. And I'm sure that uh, we may have many Alma, more we questions. do have one more. We have one more here. Um, uh, I am Nena Mehra from Nepal. Currently, I am the coordinator of Sarsuti uh, Citizen Pressure Group, Tribal Women in Asia. Our area are currently suffering from petrol. They are suffering from violence. And Okay, so I don't, uh, yeah. Uh, is this a question, Nana Mehra? Or is this like, just you want to share your information, what okay. you are doing? Do we have Nana here? Yes, she is in the Namaste, Nana Mehra. Mero got a jealous and a palika, mero nepal. I like a sorsati nagi the babs no mukos and yoga chuma. A hamro, chetrama ile, Adibasi, Maila, a pretty pinza adikar adikar behind Garibi, Ralagai, Pivet, Bata, Piditsa, Anni. I let Jahimako, Jahi, Maila, Ruchai, the red Piditsa. हिंसा बाट समाज को समुदाय बाट अनि आदिवासी महिलाहरु त्यसको लागि यतिकै काम गर्न चाहन्छु यतिकै ल अ सरी आई विल रिस्पोंड दिस क्वेशन इन नेपाली जस्ट लेट मी टेक एडवांटेज अफ बीइंग फ्रॉम द सेम कंट्री एंड स्पीकिंग द सेम लैंग्वेज सरी आई आई थिंक आई कैन एक्सप्लेन इट ब्रीफली व्हाट द क्वेश्चन वाज अबाउट इट इज अबाउट लाइक शी इज वर्किंग विद अ yeah her question is can she work you can see in the chat box what she explained 
and I will be ask, uh, responding her question in Nepali. Then I can just pro provide the brief one. Nen, uh, Nenna ji, um, yo che kosto ni adivasi janjati ko mahila ko sastha ho. Bani se tapale apply garna saknu bhayo. Tara individual oh, oh, oh. ko interest ho bani che. Interest ho individual interest ma che. Hamle individual la che yo fund nu de na. Hamre group la matre oncha community um, kere organizational la matre oncha la. Ani bujhnu bhayo ni hai na. Ani yo che adivasi janjati mahila ko sastha ho nu pario. It's a charming. You are divasi, your sons, and you are divasi, my lads, um uh carry proposal I'll new okay big till you in a high in a big till I know some style I have no guys ah so style you I did I see for when is it up I talk noon child my life I won't say so style I have no by a child there are big till I'm not some style is or something I need the box and what's up to us some would like because for some stuff and just about the hand of my child I didn't see त्यो तपाईको तपाईको दर्ता भएको संस्था हो दर्ता भएको संस्था हो र ब्याङ्क अकाउन्ट छ भने हाल्न मिल्छ आदिवासी त्यो तपाईले सुन्नु भयो नि क्राइटेरिया हैन हो त्यो भयो भने हाल्न मिल्छ ल हाँ छ छ धन्यवाद दर्ता Miss the eligibility criteria, of course, she can apply. Her organization can apply. I think that is all. Uh, let's again, once again, post uh, like you know, um, post our email address yeah. here with all the details so that um, um, that uh, we can, I think, um, end our uh, our uh, our. Excuse um, me. Excuse yes, me, madam. Uh, can I ask you one question? Yes, please. Ah, madam, actually, uh, in the application mentioned that uh, the different uh, amount of fund in a moderate mm -hmm. uh, type fund and uh, I think uh, low fund. Small. And uh, mm -hmm. what is the meaning and uh, how much amount uh, actually you are uh, um, giving? <laughs> we are not giving right now. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. uh, like we have like three type of grant size. We have three grant size. One is low which is up to 25000 usd dollar and we have uh -huh. um, medium size which is up to 85000 and we uh -huh. have large grant which goes up to 200000 so these are the uh, like you know uh, grant size and it responds to the time period of the application no how long it can go and also it has some uh, geographical coverage it has its scope of geographical coverage as I mentioned earlier, so this is all. Oh, I hope, uh, res uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So thank if you. we do not have any further question, thank you, Maya, for posting the uh, like links to everything. Please note down these links and email. Uh, of course, I hope there will be much more questions um, after you go through the registration if you have not yet gone through it. Otherwise, um, and we are um, please send us email there uh, in the email uh, mentioned here. We can respond and if you um, are applying please apply as soon as possible so that if there is any technical difficulties anything we uh, observe like needs to be like communicated to you we will communicate directly to you um, uh, early the better uh, because at the end there will be pressure we might not be able to like you know support you in the process so please apply as soon as possible with this um, i uh, thank you uh, for listening hold this hour. Um, so um, with this, I hand over this floor to uh, Alma. Thank you, Maya. Over to you, Alma. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shushila, for your beautiful presentation with lots of information. I'm sure our, our participants have uh, been enriched with this information. Uh, I also thank Maya for uh, moderating this session. And most importantly, thanks to all our participants for your very, very lively interaction and uh, uh, we are sure that we hope uh, we ha you have many more questions uh, but we look forward to receive you in the receive your queries in the email which is shared 
And also, if you have still any queries or need information, you can visit our Facebook page. Uh, all the information are provided. I thank also to our communication team and uh, the technical team for their support uh, for all this beautiful presentation and information that we have. Um, we look forward to receive many, many more applications from Asia region. And we forgot to introduce ourselves. Maya and myself are the accompaniment team for the Asia region, and Sushila as the ML coordinator. Uh, we are here to support you and accompany you uh, in the processes. And we look forward to meet you again in our next call or in the next uh, in events. So thank you so much. Have a good day, good evening, and good night from different parts of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.